Well, Lisa is here and it comes with chapped lips and sore hands and dry skin, but you can take action to protect your skin against these very cold, dry months. Joining us now with some great advice is dermatologist Dr Natasha Cook. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you for having me. Um, our skin, well, mine certainly has reacted to the seasonal change. I'm getting lots of dry patches. Yeah. Um, how else does winter affect people's skin? Winter has a dramatic effect on our skin and it's important to understand that our skin basically responds to our environment intimately. It's why I classically don't really believe in skin type because if I'm in Singapore in summer and it's really humid, I find my skin's naturally moisturised or I use a lighter moisturiser. But say if right now I'm down in the snowy mountains where the humidity is super low, there's a dry wind, my skin feels super dry, mm. sensitive, irritated. I need to change what I'm doing and how I'm looking after my skin. Mm. I find the cold weather plays havoc with my skin. I've got a combination complexion. I don't know if my PhD balances out of... Um, but um, what can we do to, um, to, to make sure our skin is good? Because it is okay. terrible. You get really dry and itchy. And itchy, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we're all prone to eczema, oh, even though we don't necessarily have the genetic condition. Because really, eczema is a dysfunction in moisturisation levels in the skin. So when the environment changes, if we get dry and itchy, oh, we can develop eczema ourselves. Oh. So what we need to do is firstly cut down how often we're washing the skin because water does not create moisture. Yes. It creates evaporation. It makes our skin drier. Especially when we turn up that shower really 100%. hot. 100%. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, no more than showering once a day. When we do shower, Get rid of your soaps, your shower washes, even though if it says soap free, if it foams, it is soap oh. and it strips out all our good oils and it wears down the protective barrier. So what do you wash yourself with? Um, there's some fantastic, like, pharmacy grade levels and chemists and whatnot, um, shower and bath oils, um, mm. like the Alpha Carry oil I really quite like. And mm. patting that onto your skin before you get into the shower will actually give it a protective layer, boost the moisture level, stop the evaporation from the shower, and mm. also you can put that in the bath. Then as soon as you get out, make sure you're applying the moisture because you want to lock the moisture in rather than letting it evaporate off your skin. You can change the quality of your moisturiser. You may be used to using a lotion in summer. Mm. These tend to be in pumps. Now, the way creams are made is if it's more lotion-y, it actually mm. has more than 50% water. So you're basically just putting water on the skin. What does water oh. do? It dries it out. Mm. So you want to use creams in tubs so they'll have more of the good moisturising ingredients in, in it. Tubs. Ointments. Yep, tubs. tubs. And what so about sorbeline cream? Tubes. Is that good to wash with? Um, sorbeline's not my favourite. It's okay. really gained an absolute, um, you know, popularity trend in Australia because it's kind of like the lazy man's choice. You know, your doctor might say, use sorbeline. I actually think there are better products on the market. Yeah, what I knew that. I was just checking for a Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what you not want to look for is what the ingredients are. So you want a, a good thick feel and you want to look for ingredients like glycerin and glycerin is an oldie but a goodie it's what we call a humectant and that means it holds water in it attracts the water from the environment and it prevents moisture loss what about if you're taking makeup off though you need something stronger than what you've been talking yeah, about yeah possibly but you don't need to overdo it so, you, so i would rather you use something like a micellar water first and then a nice gentle cleanse over the top and there are some really good cleansing oils just certainly better to be using mm. in this dry weather what about, what about my dirty old dry feet in winter? <laughs> That's right. Well, hands and feet are super prone to eczema as well. So mm. a few things. Keep your feet warm because you can get chill blains. Keep them hydrated. If you what, what are, is that? What are chill? Chill blains. They're like um, a reaction from um, the blood vessels shutting down with the cold weather. Oh. Then you get loss of blood supply to the little toes oh. and then you can get these painful itchy oh. purply discoloration oh, so lovely. you know wearing your socks but if you're going to choose something so you don't over sweat and overheat which is another big problem in winter cotton, cotton mm. that's right natural fibers they breathe and also wool ugg boots in the shape of thongs like denise has <laughs> yeah, but they're proper lambskin ones mm. well lambskin's good because lambskin also will breathe i feel that's like socks fiber. and sandals is an obvious solution here i'm sure you know. that would look fabulous on your <laughs> down the street yes and with your hands as well because i'm always washing bottles and dishes in the fridge, in the sink, I guess you need to wear gloves as well as much 100%. as you possibly can. Hundred percent, and even like you could put, if you've got really dry hands, what a good tip is, put some moisturiser on, wear a cotton glove, then put your washing gloves on over the top. That will protect mm. them. So basically, water will break down your barrier function, which will increase your capacity to get dermatitis and eczema. The Which trouble can't. is, when you're talking about all all that cream all over you. Mm. My body doesn't breathe. I get that feeling hot. greasy. Mm. Maybe you're not choosing the right moisturiser. The right mm. moisturiser should leave you feeling hydrated but not overly occluded. So it needs oh. to be able to integrate with the skin. Okay. Mm. What about lips? Lips. Okay, so lips naturally have less oil glands, yeah. known as sebaceous glands, so they dry out the first. So lots of lip balm is super important. Uh, one of my favourites is lanolin. 
it's again an oldie but a goodie. From Lanolin, the sheep? Lanolin, yeah, Lanolin's actually bioidentical mm. to our natural sebum. That's actually, if, actually you look at a, if you look at a shearer, they're the most rough as guts working class. The they've all got this beautiful soft hand yeah, because they're constantly. The sheep's skin. Yes. And you've got to be careful of, um, of menthols and that type of thing in lip balms because it feels nice at the time, but it quite, it's quite drying, right? Yeah, all well, some of those, active, those ingredients can be sensitised some people. So I think keeping it simple. Um, poor, poor cream. Purple cream is great if it really is purple ointment. Some of the ointments are more petrolatum, and if you look at the ingredients profile, the purple is minuscule. So also, these the good ingredients you want to make sure in your top three to five in the list when you read the product. Yeah. There's because so much to law, think about. Yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> and also, if you have a little lie down, I might just recap the main points of the interview. <laughs> Change your skincare routine in winter. Make sure you moisturise. Avoid soap and foaming washes. Go for bath oils and shower oils instead. And don't forget to keep hydrating. Dr Natasha Cook, you're fabulous. Come back again. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.